This is a short lecture about acetylenes, cumulenes and dienes. The reason why they are grouped together is because they all have multiple pi bonds. And when you start interacting an acetylene with a metal, you do not know whether it's behaving as a four electron donor or a two electron donor. This gives it a very special flexibility. Cumulenes on the other hand have got two pi bonds juxtaposed to one another. They are connected only by a carbon atom and so the metal atom can move from one double bond to the other. But in both cases they are only two electron donors. Dienes on the other hand are conjugated double bonds that we are talking about and this conjugated system is technically a four electron donor but ideally how much electron density is transferred to the metal is a function of several factors. So we will talk about each one of these uh, pi systems separately. Today we'll talk about acetylenes. First, I should say that acetylenes are really like alkenes because the pi bond is a donor. The two electrons that are in the bonding orbital of the pi system can donate a pair of electrons to the metal. The pi star orbital, on the other hand, can accept electron density from the metal. And so the same doer chat duncanson model would fit the interaction of an acetylene with a metal. There is one major difference here. And that major difference is the fact that there is less steric hindrance in the acetylene compared to the alkene. There is only one R group which you need to worry about which is present on the terminal carbons. And so the two terminal carbons have, might have at the most one R group as opposed to the alkene, which has a total of four R groups to provide steric hindrance. So here is one slide that tells you about the synthesis of an acetylene complex. The first example talks about a platinum 2 plus complex, which is interacting with di-tertiary butyl acetylene. The system is in fact coordinated to the metal atom in through the center of the carbon-carbon pi system. And you have exactly what you would expect from such a dual chat Duncanson model of interaction. First of all, you have lengthening of the carbon-carbon bond by a slight amount. The free acetylene is 120 picometers and the coordinated acetylene is 124 picometers. And the stretching frequency is changed by a more significant amount. Usually the stretching frequency is around 2190 or 2200 centimeter minus one and it has dropped down to 2028 centimeter minus one. This is typical of a pi system which has lost some of its bonding interactions and has probably populated some of its pi star orbitals, reducing the carbon carbon double bond character. What is interesting in the case of the acetylene complex is that the normal carbon 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 bond angle the, between the two acetylenes and the substituent, you have an angle which is marked here as 165 degrees. That angle is now no longer 180 degrees. 180 is what you would expect for an sp hybridized carbon, which is the acetylenic carbon. You expect 180 degrees. The angle has dropped to 165 degrees. This clearly suggests that the carbon is moving from an sp system to an sp2 system. So this change in hybridization, the change in the bond length, 
the change in the stretching frequency all of these factors point to the fact point indicate that the doer chat duncanson model is operating let's now move on to another complex which is again a platinum complex but this time it is a platinum zero complex the platinum is in the zero valent state and it is interacting with diphenylacetylene similar bond angle bond distance changes have taken place but this time the changes are even more drastic notice the bending is close to 40 degrees the stretching frequency has gone down by nearly 400 cm minus 1 and the bond distance has increased to 132 picometers so very clearly this is almost like an sp2 hybridized carbon how can this happen one can think of a significant amount of pi star orbital population and the formation of two single bonds between the platinum and the carbons so if this platinum becomes a platinum carbon single bond now what you will see is that the triple bond has come down from the c triple bond c to c double bond c so one can describe this as a metallocyclopropene metallocyclopropene because it's a cyclopropene unit where one of the carbons has been replaced by a metal the platinum atom so there are complexes where there is very little population of the pi star orbital because this is a platinum 2 plus complex the extent of pi back donation is significantly less whereas in the second complex the extent of pi donation is significantly more and so the bending and the hybridization changes are more in the case of the platinum zero complex than in the case of the platinum 2 plus complex all of these things are consistent again with the doer chat duncanson model what is interesting about the alkyne complexes is that unlike alkene complexes which form very unstable adducts with positively charged metal atoms acetylene seems to be a better donor because it is a better donor you tend to have greater degree of donation from the alkyne to the metal and so high oxidation state metals which need more electron density are more eager to interact with an alkyne than with an alkene the alkyne can donate more electron density here i have for you pictured a system which has got uh, c2cl2 oet twice that means there are four groups attached to the two carbons which form the alkene so this is actually an alkene the compound that you are uh, talking about c2cl4 and c2cl2 oet2 are the two al alkenes so they are being treated with wcl6 and what is happening is that the c2cl4 is actually happening is a, is functioning as a reducing agent it is accepting two chlorines from the wcl6 and in the process it gets converted to c2cl6 that is the hexachloro ethane hexachloroethane and the reduced species which is formed c2cl2 is coordinating to the tungsten okay now what you have done in the process in in this whole reaction is that you have converted a monomeric unit into a dimeric unit and this actually is a halogen bridge species this is a halogen bridge species which can be broken down by the addition of excess chloride ions excess chloride ions are added and that results in the formation of this hexacoordinated tungsten complex now the hexacoordinated tungsten complex has got an extra chlorine cl minus and so it's negatively charged 
and the positive charge is provided by the PPH4 plus unit. So let's take a look at what is exactly happening in this complex. You started with plus six tungsten in plus six oxidation state. You reduced it to plus four oxidation state. And then you added a Cl minus. So this, there are five chlorines here, but one chloride also has an excess negative charge, which is there on this uh, counter ion. And you are ending up with a PPH4 salt. Now, uh, this is very typical of an alkyne complex. You have a high oxidation state alkyne system that is being formed as opposed to the alkene systems which were reluctant to interact with metals in high oxidation states. The fact that it can stabilize alkynes in very strained modes is exemplified by this complex which is projected on the screen for you. This is a platinum complex. It is actually a platinum zero complex, zero valent mode. And you notice that a cycloalkyne is coordinated to the platinum where substantial amount of electron density is transferred to the pi star orbitals of the cycloalkyne. And it is equivalent to a metallocyclopropene, judging from the arguments that we had proposed earlier in the previous slide. You can see that the angle that is subtended at the carbon 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 bond is 127 degrees. This is almost close to 120 degrees, which is what is required for sp2 hybridization. So it is very clear that platinum coordinated to a cycloalkyne is feasible only because the platinum has converted the pi bond into two sigma bonds. So between the carbon and the platinum, now we almost have the equivalent of a sigma bond and we have a metallocyclopropene. A similar situation occurs with a benzene ring here where uh, hydrogen which is present on the ortho position of the carbon which is bound to the metal, the hydrogen which is bound to the metal is now interacting with the methyl group and leaving as methane. So methane is eliminated because a methyl group from the metal and a hydrogen from the benzene ring are eliminated and it forms a benzene. So this benzene is coordinated to the metal and that angle is, sorry, that bond distance is now 136 picometers, which is almost equivalent to the double bond distance that is present in the same ring system. So you have clear bond alternation in this molecule where the, there is a single, single bond, double bond, and then again a single bond, and then a double bond. So you can see that the bond distance between the two carbons that are bound to the metal is close to 136 picometers, which is exactly the same distance that is there in the uncoordinated double bond in this benzene, which is coordinated to the metal. Now, if you look at the metal, it is unusual that in this case, the metal is in fact starting with an oxidation state of five. The metal is in fact in the oxidation state of plus five. You can see three methyl groups, uh, Al, uh, uh, C5, C6H5 minus unit which is coordinated to the metal and a C5H5 which is coordinated to the metal. So this tantalum complex is actually formed by tantalum in the plus 5 coordination uh, in the plus 5 oxidation state and it eliminates methane and forms a compound in the plus three coordination state attached to the benzene. So you can think of it as if it is two sigma bonds 
in which case it would retain the plus 5 oxidation state and it is only eliminated a neutral molecule. But by convention, if we think of it as a benzyne coordinated to a metal, you can think of the oxidation state of plus 3 and because it has got two valence electrons in the metal, those two valence electrons can be back donated to the pi star orbital of the benzyne. So the pi star orbitals of benzyne can be populated with, uh, with the metals two electrons. Here is another example of an alkyne complex in a strained ring system which is coordinated to nickel now and nickel is in zero oxidation state. You can see that there are two phosphorus ligands which are coordinated to the nickel and in addition it is coordinated to a benzyne. This time there are two alkyne units present in this benzene moiety and the bond distances are very clearly distinct. You have a very short bond distance between the two carbons which are C triple bond C units which are interacting with the metal. But clearly the ring system insists on a bond angle of 120 degrees. I would like to encourage you to look at this alkyne complex in 3D and I have to upload this SIF file in your team's directory. You can go there and examine this nickel complex and check out the type of bond angles and bond distances that are present in this system. But the arguments as far as the understanding of the electronic structure goes, the arguments are the same as what we have discussed earlier. So acetylenes are like alkenes. The great advantage is that they have less steric hindrance and in cyclic cases the steric hindrance is even less. The pi bond is a donor and the pi star orbital accepts electrons into the pi star empty pi star orbital as a result of which you end up weakening the carbon carbon bond and this weakening results in the conversion of an sp center into an sp2 center and two metal carbon bonds. So you could call it a cyclopropene in one sense, a metallocyclopropene. What is interesting is that in the acetylene unit, there is one pi bond which is perpendicular to another pi orbital. Because there are two pi bonds, you can have two metals bound to the same acetylene. Now we will see the example of such a unit. The two pi bonds are at 90 degrees to one another. So here I have pictured for you an acetylene molecule in which the two metal atoms are perpendicular to each other. One of the metal atoms approaches along the x-axis, the other approaches along the y-axis. So if you consider the CC axis of the acetylene as a Z axis, then the metal can approach along the X axis and the Y axis. So keep this idea in mind. And now let us see uh, the example of such a binding mode. Here is a classic example of a dicobalt octacarbonyl cobalt in the zero oxidation state, but the two cobalt units are interacting with one another through a single bond. Cobalt, cobalt, single bond is present, but then that is sufficient distance for it to interact with the two carbon pi orbitals in a perpendicular fashion. So once again, I would like to uh, upload this file cezxua.cif in your team's directory you can see the cobalt atoms interacting with the pi bond in such a way, two pi bonds in such a way that one pi bond is interacting with one cobalt and the second pi bond which is perpendicular to the other pi bond interacting with the second cobalt. So this now 
makes the acetylene a four electron donor. Two electrons are donated to the cobalt on the top and two electrons are donated to the cobalt on the bottom. This dicobalt octacarbonyl complex uh, which reacts with the acetylenes and generates a hexacarbonyl dicobalt unit bonded to C triple bond C turns out to be a very good protecting group for acetylenes. So whenever you have a C triple bond C which needs to be protected, one tends to use this dicobalt octacarbonyl to prepare this dicobalt complex of the acetylene. You can see here that the complex form of the propargyl alcohol can react with HBF4 and generate a CH2 plus unit. The CH2 plus unit can react with another activated ene molecule. Here it is a vinyl acetate. The vinyl acetate forms a carbon-carbon bond and the product that you can see is due to the formation of a CC bond between uh, this carbon of this CH2 unit and the CH2 unit which is present on the present on the propargyl unit. So you can see that uh, this is negatively charged because of electron being pumped in from the acetate group to the CH2 and that attacks the, uh, the charged CH2 plus unit which is complex to the cobalt. So this type of a reaction would be possible only because the C triple bond C is now complex to the dicobalt unit and uh, this is used for protection against a variety of nucleophiles and um, dihydrogen and so on. So what we have seen is that acetylene is similar to ethylene but because there are two pi bonds, the two pi bonds can interact with two different metals. Is it possible for one metal to interact with both pi bonds simultaneously? Actually the answer is yes and that is feasible because you can make linear combinations of the two pi bonds. Pictured for you here are the two filled orbitals of the acetylene. So here you have the two pi orbitals, one which is underlined in red, the other underlined in black and they are two are perpendicular to one another. When you have no interacting moiety, when the acetylene is in an isolated state, the two pi bonds cannot mix with one another. These two pi bonds cannot mix with one another, they are degenerate they are having the same energy but then because they are perpendicular to each other they cannot mix. But the moment you put another metal close to this acetylene then the symmetry of these two pi systems is lost because they now have a second metal atom which is interacting with them. And then you can form two combinations. One of them is the combination which is formed by A plus B. This A and B, you can combine them as A plus B and generate this orbital, which is a linear combination of those two orbitals. If you make A minus B, then you would end up with this combination which is pictured for you on the top. So A minus B is what you have here. So this is A minus B and that is also filled. So two combinations of the filled pi orbitals on acetylene become possible because now you have a metal which is approaching the acetylene in this direction. Just imagine an acetylene which is approaching between the x and the y axis. Remember I told you that the two orbitals are on the x and the y orbitals axis of the acetylene. So if a metal approaches between the x and the y axis, then I can have two different interactions. One is a symmetric combination and the other is an anti-symmetric combination 
and the or both are filled now and so the metal can interact with both combinations and because the metal now has got the right set of orbitals to interact with both combinations the acetylene becomes a four electron donor the acetylene becomes a four electron donor if both combinations can donate electron density from the acetylene to the empty orbitals of the metal so imagine these filled orbitals interacting with empty metal orbitals both of them can donate electron density and so you have a four electron donor which is generated by a simple acetylene interacting with a metal now this turns out to be a electron rich four electron donor similarly similarly we can combine the empty orbitals in a symmetric and an anti-symmetric fashion so i have combined the two here this is this is a minus b and this is a plus b the same type of combinations i have written here this is a plus b and this is a minus b so the a minus b and the a plus b can now interact with suitable orbitals on the metal but notice that a plus b will have a suitable combination with a pi type orbital on the metal however this results in a delta type interaction so this results in a pi type of interaction and this results in a delta type of interaction so it turns out to be a weak interaction nevertheless what we have seen is that there are suitable orbitals on the metal which can interact with linear combinations of the filled and empty orbitals on an alkyne so much so you can have a four electron donor which is a single acetylene being a four electron donor to a metal atom i have only redrawn all the pictures here so that you can visualize the type of interactions that can happen the energy levels of these two in isolated systems all the filled orbitals will be of the same energy the empty orbitals will be of the same energy and higher in energy of course but nevertheless these two orbitals will split depending on the type of interaction they can have with the metal so a symmetric combination will interact with a symmetric s orbital for instance or a sigma type interaction will result from this whereas here you can end up with a pi type interaction and this will also result in a pi type interaction and this will result in a delta type interaction you will see in the next section when we discuss dienes this type of a paradigm is going to repeat itself when a diene can interact with the metal in sigma pi and delta fashions imagine the empty metal 6s orbital when you have a 5d element and a pz orbital on the metal interacting with this combination of the filled acetylene orbital and you can have again a pi type interaction between this empty orbital and a filled 5d orbital from the metal and a poor overlap between the filled d shell from the metal and this will be a delta type interaction
the complications of how many electrons an acetylene can give to the metal does not cease here. Finally, I will show you one example, which is granted a very complicated example, but for which there is a crystal structure available. And I will post this crystal structure also for you so that you can visualize it and see for yourself how an acetylene can interact with a metal. This example is in principle tungsten zero system, a tungsten zero complex. And so it has got six electrons to start with. Tungsten has got six electrons to start with. Each carbon monoxide has only one of them. Carbon monoxide can give you two electrons. And three acetylenes are there. So three into two, six electrons can be obtained. Now comes the question, is the acetylene a four electron donor or is it a two electron donor? If it's a two electron donor, then only six electrons can be donated to the tungsten. So a total of 14 electrons are accounted for the tungsten. This is far short of the 18 electrons that you would expect for a stable tungsten complex. However, if the acetylene functions as a four electron donor, then each acetylene can give four electrons because they are symmetrically bound. You will see that when you examine the crystal structure. So three into four, 12 electrons are obtained from the acetylene moieties, in which case it becomes a 20 electron complex. That is too many. So if it's a two electron donor, it is too few. If it is a four electron donor, it is too much. So what exactly is the clue? How does this complex remain as a stable system in spite of this odd electron counts? If you do a group theoretical analysis of this complex, you find out that the tungsten orbitals fall into two sets, A1 plus E and A2 plus E type orbitals. Since there are no A2 type orbitals on the metal atom, the maximum number of electrons that can be donated by the alkyne is only 10. So although there are 12 electrons on the alkyne, only 10 of them can be suitably donated to the metal. That is why this forms a very stable 18 electron complex. So you will be able to see this and uh, appreciate the structure and the way in which the metal is interacting with the alkyne when you look at the crystal structure.